What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the Fanboys Anonymous group meeting podcast. This is going to be a roundtable discussion on technology in movies. I'm your host, as always, the founder of Fanboys Anonymous, Tony Mango, and with me on the panel for this evening, I have with me Travis Goss. How's it going? Sean Walker. Hello. Mike Payton. Howdy ho. Sam Lassio. That fucker stole my line. <laughs> and Chris Days. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, okay, so we did the Oscar stuff earlier this month. That's going to be one of our big linchpins for uh, this group meeting. But instead of just having one episode this month, we decided we were going to have a couple more things that we're going to showcase to you guys. And this is going to be one of our normal discussion kind of things, taking the general topic and just kind of turning it around and shoving it up its own ass. <laughs> is the best way that we can kind of explain it to this. Uh, we're going to break this down into basically two different sections. Uh, we're going to talk about technology from movies that have become real, things that have been inspired by science fiction and movies and just general stuff that, uh, you know, seemed like it would never happen or it would be, you know, millions of years in the future or anything like that, but we do have it now. And then we're also going to talk about the stuff that hasn't come true, but we'd like for it to be. Uh, so we're just going to keep this pretty relaxed and, you know, spitball different kind of stuff here. One thing I want to mention that it's just because I'm a huge fan of it and because it's a pretty simple way to start off. Something that is big in the Bond series is always the gadgets from Q Branch. And we've gotten to a point now where a lot of the things from these movies have become real to the point where they actually addressed in Skyfall that the other things that haven't are just sort of ridiculous and we're going to keep the stuff that is real. Obviously stuff like exploding pens and all that. I mean, we don't necessarily know if the CIA and stuff does that, but we do know that it's possible. Even the jet pack from Thunderball is something that we've seen a lot of variations of. And that's something that I wanted to start off with because the jet pack is something that has been in a lot of, of different movies and TV shows and everything like that. It's one of those staple forms of technology that people love to throw around for the future. We still don't necessarily have that technology where everybody has it, but we've got about 20 different prototypes that have been marketed out there. What do you guys think about jetpacks? I mean, I've never been a huge, huge supporter of it where I've been like, Oh, if there's one thing I could get, it would be a jetpack, man. But, uh, they do seem a little fun. Travis, what do you think about jetpacks? <laughs> uh, well, that's the thing is about jetpacks. Uh, I don't know why anybody would want those right now because even though they're prototypes, they have to be very dangerous at this point, and I'm sure they're still working out the kinks. But I'm also I've also seen um, uh, hydro jetpacks, which look re- which look pretty fun. Um, I remember watching this one uh, show called Idiot Abroad, and they were sending Carl Pilkington, who was a friend of uh, Ricky Gervais to this one location where they were trying out these water jetpacks. And I thought, well, that's kind of different. Um, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know how, how they would work for everyday life, but maybe, maybe for like a, a ride or something. I don't know, but, uh, I don't know. Jetpacks. I mean, I think we're still kind of far off from actually having them as a norm at this point. Sean, is that something you were ever interested in? Not a fan. I'm afraid of heights, so I know I wouldn't be purchasing one. <laughs> but I think it'd be kind of funny to watch it on um, YouTube, um, um, jetpack failures, and <laughs> seeing people crash into buildings and shit. So to be fair, for my own could, amusement, I would watch it. To be fair, you could just kind of like hover only like a foot off the ground if you're afraid of the heights. <laughs> and just be like that dude who decides he doesn't want to walk anymore. He just wants the jetpack to do the work for him. Make that I mean, like an extended version of those little uh, wheelchair rascal things that we have now. Well, I was about to say, if I didn't want to walk, I would get one of those wheelchair rascal things. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck flying, man. Peyton, Fuck heights. you interested in uh, jetpacks? I guess I'm going to be the uh, minority here. I, I actually think jetpacks are pretty cool. Um, you, you associate jetpacks with James Bond. I'm actually going to tell you where I associate jetpacks from. It's from an episode of The Adventures of Pete and Pete. 
It was oh, yeah. an episode where Little Pete saw an ad in this magazine for a jetpack, and he got super excited for it, and he worked really hard raking yards, I think it was, all summer in order to get this jetpack. And he sent away for it when he finally had enough money, super excited. Jetpack comes in the mail. He opens up the box, and it ends up being a leaf blower. <laughs> and I, I'm not really sure like how that was supposed to add up, but that that's what he got in the mail. I remember the whole thing movie there showed these vignettes of him flying around the jetpack all excited, and then he gets the leaf blower and he just like falls out of the air because it's a leaf blower. <laughs> oh, that was a fantastic bit. Um, and uh, that's the my probably actually my earliest memory of ever seeing a jetpack and getting really excited for it. And then of course there's things like the Rocketeer. Jetpacks are badass. I don't know how, why you guys are being so down on them. Yeah, the technology's not there yet. I agree with Travis. Right now, I wouldn't go to the store and buy a jetpack. But if we get the you know hover technology down, which I think is something we're going to be talking a lot about hover technology through a lot of gadgets, if we can get that down with a jetpack, I would totally love having one. Screw driving. I mean, nothing is more beautiful in nature than flight. And it's one of those things that man has always been extraordinarily jealous of. You know, when we look at a bird, th- this thing just has this ability to fly and just go anywhere, anytime it wants. Uh, and of course, it just chooses to spend its time sitting on power lines and pooping on things. <laughs> Well, that brings up another point because you mentioned the hover stuff. Uh, something else that we had brainstormed ahead of time, some different ideas to talk about here uh, that many people had brought up was hoverboards from Back to the Future. Oh, yes. Travis, what do you think about that? Oh, man, I'd love to have one even though I don't skateboard. <laughs> but I just tried it out just for the for the thrill of it. Um, the thing is, I, I um, essentially, since I'm such a huge fan of the movies... Uh, I was watching the DVD set a while back, which I still have in my collection, by the way. And they mentioned that the hoverboard really does exist. It exists, but they can't sell it because it's extremely dangerous. But I'm pretty sure maybe in a few years or so, maybe in a couple decades, once they get all the kinks worked out, it might be a possibility we could see hoverboards as a thing to buy from Toys R Us. You never know. I hope Toys R Us is still around. Well, you never know. It's good to... yeah. So, Sam, hoverboards, all that kind of stuff, jetpacks, what are your uh, thoughts? If jetpacks do become real, I really hope that they are licensed to use it because any jackass can buy a bicycle. And I really don't want, like, I live on the third floor of my building. Like, if a bird hits my window, that's one thing. But if some, like, freshman just smashes through my window... I really would not like, especially on like a college campus where there's a lot of drinking and shit. Some guy just gets drunk and throws his jet pack on and just takes off. That sounds like it would be an awesome party. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would be awesome for him, but not for anyone in his immediate area. It'd be awesome um, for me because I'd be watching it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would try it. It's probably not something I would own. I also am not really nice with heights, but not so much that I wouldn't give it a shot. Uh, as far as the hoverboard's concerned, I would love that. It would it would have to determine how high it can go. Like, I wouldn't want to be going, like, 30 feet up in the air, but... Like, I would definitely have a hoverboard like they have in Back to the Future Part 2, where it's, like, maybe a foot or more off the ground. That would be kind of cool to have. I would, I would definitely buy that. So I'd rather have those flying bike kind of jet ski things that they've had from the movie The Island... Probably nobody's seen I thought, I thought you were here. going with E.T. for a second. No. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going with The Return Elliot of the Jedi. Like, <laughs> the Island's one of those movies that like almost nobody's ever seen. I think it's actually really underrated. It's I, I, Michael it's, Bay. Uh, you and McGregor, right? Yeah. 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 And Scarlett Johansson and uh, you know, a bunch of other people. But that's They're one of those like movies that. where it's kind of a sort of a realistic future, not an insanely distant future kind of thing. And they have these... Um, these things that look like jet skis, I forget what they call them in the movie, but they're only used for like this kind of secret government police sort of thing. Like it's not like everybody's just around with these giant bikes flying through the sky and stuff like that, but they look super fun. They're like motorcycle uh, jet ski kind of things. I really like those ideas, but um, Dace, what do you think about all the hoverboard stuff? Are you interested in that stuff, or would you rather have like a goblin glider, like the Green Goblin or something? Oh, that would be badass. I, well, I think for the most part that uh, I, I've seen the plastic Mattel uh, 2013 San Diego Comic Con exclusive of the uh, hoverboard, that it, it kind of like hovered, but like if you stepped on it, you'd smash into the ground. So they've definitely got some work to do on that, but I think it'd be cool to have as a toy and 
play around with. But when it comes to jetpacks, I'd want like the Z6 jetpack from Star Wars that Boba Fett and Jango Fett, uh, Jango Fett wore. That has a fucking missile on the back. That should be awesome. Yeah, but if somebody bumps into you one time and you're dead. Uh, I'm, I'm smarter than those two. They're close. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in those films who had one fucked up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fuck up. I, don't, I wouldn't take on a Jedi. I'm not stupid. I'm a bounty hunter. You're not going to turn <laughs> your back to Han Solo. No. I See, I, I'm smarter than those two. They make classic uh, mistakes. <laughs> Days crawls out of the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> yeah, damn right. Another thing, tying this back to the, the Bond stuff to, to sort of knock them out of the way, that is kind of funny how times have changed. In the movie Goldfinger, one of the big gadgets in it, obviously, is the, the car and the whole situation with the um, ejector, ejector seat, which, you know, I mean, we could do that anytime. All you need is a giant spring. But uh, the big, like, oh, wow, this, we'll, we'll never get it to be like this kind of a thing, is that they have a GPS tracker in the car. And Bond is able to have this little tiny homing beacon uh, in his in the sole of his shoe. That was just like, oh my god, we put a GPS tracking system in this little tiny thing that you can wear on you and whatever. And now we've got it built into phones. We've got, you know, GPS devices in cars. That itself has just become such uh, an advancement to the point where they weren't even sure that like that kind of stuff could happen. And we've in, you know, 50 years, we've made it so much better. Yeah. I mean, they had something similar and not GPS, but didn't they have something in Batman begins where he popped this little thing out of his boot and it uh, did the sonar for the bats to come. Yeah. I'm sure we've got something we could happen with that. I mean, yeah, Batman did it. (laughs) (laughs) If anything, I'm going to trust Batman. If he can do it, and fuck, I can do it. <laughs> That's the, the day's philosophy for if Boba Fett can do it, then I can. <laughs> um, so when it comes to the hoverboards and all that other kind of stuff, that's all basically the same. Um, I'm going to tie that into one other thing here, though, which is just general ideas of uh, suits and flights and all that. Iron Man. Now, Iron Man has kind of a 50 50 thing going here obviously we do not have some dude walking around in an iron man suit saving people from you know super villains and all that other stuff but we've probably got the technology for that right i mean i doubt it you don't think so no i mean i I think we could make one that looked like the first one he made when he was in the cave yeah i don't think that we'll have like um ultron popping out or anything but uh i think we could have some kind of like a, a self flight suit kind of a thing going on i mean if you know of a country that has indispensable income that can just burn cash into something for one dude then yeah russia america (laughs) (laughs) yeah but america it's pretend money it doesn't count Mm, they still do it I could see them doing that, but trying to make it like on the cheap for other things. They've taken other ideas that uh, are built around the idea of like an exoskeleton for the military. They've made different prototypes and stuff. They're not a you know the a, a, a same level of like hovering and flying with repulsor technology and all those other. Well, kinds that's that's stuff. the big problem is that the whole reason Iron Man works is because of his arc reactor. If we don't have that technology, so if we're gonna power the suit, every frickin' missile or gun or anything that would be on that suit, we have to carry around some form of a battery with it. So the more weapons you add, the heavier this thing gets because you got to power all the toys on it. Or we could just, uh, you know, put Tesla coils all over the world. Yeah, We're not allowed to now, do that, now right? Now you're thinking rationally. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Be made like, in uh, China. Some kind of a way to, you know, get around all these companies that are greedy? Come on. <laughs> Is uh, Tesla coils one of those things we wish we had from a movie or no he actually made them but yeah i know i make it is this just one of those things we wish we had (laughs) (laughs) that everybody stay tuned for the next podcast where we do things that are real but we still wish we had them what are you talking about we're talking about doing tesla coil stuff we're not having another podcast we're all gonna mysteriously disappear yeah it's like we're gonna get we're gonna get the youtube channel taken down again (laughs) (laughs) fucking cia is gonna come in but that's kind of 50-50 on the scale of something that is real, something that isn't real. We've got stuff that 
uh, is similar to that, but not obviously all of the same technology. But I would love to see that kind of stuff happen. I'd love to put on an Iron Man suit and just, uh, you know, blow cars up and stuff like that. <laughs> I would go fly in Afghanistan and blow a tank up. Why not? What the hell? I'd be terrified of flying, though. Not that I would get hurt, because obviously he's protected in the armor. I'm just afraid that, I mean, that suit is so heavy. I'm just afraid what would happen if you ran into somebody by accident. Well, maybe they have got uh, one of them, too, and they could duke it out. Oh, that would be bitching. You got like a rock'em, sock'em robots kind of thing. Which is basically uh, what I thought Real Steel was going to be when I first saw that trailer. <laughs> There's technology that we probably wish we'd have. <laughs> you should have watched Robot Combat League on Sci-Fi. Because now the you you didn't want just watching a movie. Now it's actually real. They actually had a competition where robots boxed. So there you go. That's awesome. There's did, an invention they, that came real. They did boxing on that. I thought that it was just kind of one of those um, battle no. bots sort of thing where everybody attaches. A no, little, no, it, uh, it was like spike. robots that stood upright and they had arms and they punched each other like rock'em sock'em robots. That's awesome. Yeah. You might have to check. Which, out. by the way, you can listen to one of the contestants from that show, CG Thornton, by searching for that episode of Geek Speak on FanboysAnonymous.com. Ah. Hear about her exploits in that show and how she controlled the robot and all that cool stuff. And how she plug, became plug, a robot. <laughs> so that's brings... technology I wished was real. Cyborgs. Oh, uh, cyborg. I don't know. See that that's a that's a whole other thing. Because then you start getting into comparing the different artificial intelligence stuff. Do you go with? Well, no, not an android, a cyborg, like cybernetic enhancements on a human body. I'm mm. part cyborg. I got a metal plate in my knee. Does that count? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you're not talking like Terminator level cyborgs, right? Well, no, I'm talking like not RoboCop level. I'm talking like mechan like they already have mechanical legs and mechanical arms that are getting better. But I want something more like Luke Skywalker's hand from Empire Strikes Back. Something that is so real you can't even tell and it has complete feeling in it. Well, they do have a lot of advancement with uh, with that kind of stuff that, from what I've heard. Oh, yeah, there is advancement. But, I mean, all the different ways that the bones in your hands and the muscles, all the ways that your hands can actually move, they don't have all those movements. So it's very intricate. Well, it's funny. When I was watching the RoboCop movie that just came out this year, mm. uh, they obviously they had to update it to current standards and stuff. You didn't have the guy walking around in the... Um, the foam costume that weighs 100 pounds and stuff, a lot of things CGI, and they have to change things to kind of be like uh, the technology of today and all that other kind of stuff. But so much of that movie, it seemed like it really could just be happening right now. Obviously, we don't have like ED-209 and stuff like that patrolling the streets, but the idea of taking just a couple different organs from somebody and you know keeping them alive and then adding like an iron lung and a lot of other kind of stuff to it i mean we do a lot of that stuff now so oh, yeah you don't even have to do all that shit i mean they're coming out with technology now where they can just take some of your own stem cells and regrow your organs that's crazy I'd buy that for a dollar <laughs> <laughs> Bazinga. 10 points to show for that reference <laughs> Well, Sam, you brought up a good point with uh, cyborgs and stuff like that. Any other cybernetic uh, stuff before we start getting into artificial intelligence that you wanted to kind of bring out there? Um, well, I mean, I'm a big proponent of immortality. <laughs> so as <laughs> yeah, close to that... Big as fan you can, of not dying here. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of not dying. As, as close to that as you can get, like, if I... If, I mean, they can replace your heart now. They can replace all these vital organs of your body, but some of them just can't be replaced. But the one thing that I'm really looking forward to is mostly because if I didn't have my glasses on, I would be legally blind. I really want, like, eye enhancements. Like, outside of surgery or anything like that, you can't even do an eye transplant because it's just too intricate. I wish they could just have something where you can actually make, like, a webcam. Like, just a fake eye and insert it into a body. That sounds gross. <laughs> Yeah, but I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> wah, wah. Wonder what uh, resolution you would get. <laughs> it depends on what operating system you're on. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't pay your bills, they like cut the vision. They start replacing like your vocal cords with the microphones, kind of stuff, and you got to go along with that. You got the onboard mic, and it's terrible. Yeah. 
But yeah, like I'm not looking for RoboCop because, I mean, if you do that, that just opens this whole new can of worms where it's going to be a personalized arms race where if you can afford these enhancements, I mean, you can fucking crush a rock in your hand. But Pretty sure I just like the already. small stuff, like just enough that it can improve your quality of life, like giving sight to somebody who can't see, giving hearing to somebody who can't hear. We're taking those steps. We got a lot of cool medical stuff today that we didn't have even 10 years ago. But I would just like to see the next step forward into either completely replacing it or improving upon it. I want those uh, nanites in the Jason X. <laughs> Remember those little things that went flying down their arms and like regenerate the bodies? That's that's what I want. There you Turn. go. If I want anything, I want to be able to have a machine gun for a leg, like in Planet Terror. <laughs> just get a chainsaw for your arm. That too, yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. both your grounds. Just to replace all of them. Why not? You only get a spatula for your left hand instead. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh man, this isn't really as useful as the chainsaw, but if I'm ever making eggs. <laughs> <laughs> honey, I'm flipping pancakes. Don't worry, honey, I got this. Oh, fuck, I used the wrong hand. Honey, I fucked up the pancakes. <laughs> I burnt my real hand. Can you clean my chainsaw, please? <laughs> I can't clean it with my spatula hand. <laughs> Oh, fuck, I'm right-handed. I should have done it with the other one. Uh, all right, now this is something that we brought up ahead of time. I'm going to circle back to artificial intelligence later, but now that we're on the topic, Sam, you had brainstormed uh, two na- two words that really <laughs> open up oh, a whole yeah. big thing with this. Go ahead and fill us in. Inspector Gadget. <laughs> I mean... As crazy as it sounds, I mean, like, if you just take the next step from what I said, we're, like, improving upon everything, why not? Just fucking Swiss Army knife in your fingers, get a helicopter in your hat. Apparently, you can never take off your clothes because you look like just this freak of nature underneath. Is that why he doesn't take that off? I don't know. That I assume so. He's got to look so fucked up under there. I just thought <laughs> that it was because trench coats are awesome. I mean, did you ever see him take off his hat? Oh. Uh, He's probably got like brain exposed and shit. <laughs> We're like a dark way to turn that Matthew Broderick movie. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that's like a deleted scene. We're Coming in 2025, like... Inspector Gadget the movie. Directed by fucking like David Fincher or something. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell I would see it. Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that would be kind of cool to have that kind of stuff, but I don't know. I don't like the idea of having too much technology in me. Yeah, well, I mean, using it, technology. It would turn into the fucking uh, robot chicken skit they did, where it was Inspector Gadget, and like he got an upgrade, and his niece looks at it and she goes Skynet, and he up- uploads it and he turns into a Terminator. <laughs> so that's something I don't want to see happen. Robotic soldiers. Artificial intelligence, almost. Period. Yeah. There's just too much chance for it to turn on people. I mean, we're going to touch upon a lot of different stuff like this, but anybody who's seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, Hal, anybody who's seen Terminator movies, Skynet, you've got Ultron from Age of Ultron coming up, uh, the new Avengers movie, it almost never seems to work out right. iRobot is another movie that is just built around this concept. The only one I can think of where they don't really seem like artificial intelligence is bad is AI artificial intelligence. Which, by the way, I want that fucking bear. Screw the yeah. little kid. I don't give a shit about like little people. Well, I mean, didn't they? Didn't awesome. they have like a bunch of robot prostitutes? Well, that too. <laughs> Are you on about small soldiers, Bayano? Oh, I love small soldiers. I Everything love else soldiers. is just a toy. What about Small Soldiers? I've never actually seen that. Seriously? Uh, this, company, seen this company has... Uh, they steal these military chips that were created for advanced AI. And they underestimated, I guess, the power of it. And they decided to put it in these toys to give them like the most realistic toy that you could ever buy so that their company would just take off. And the toys, obviously, once they got the chips in, they started to become the characters they were made to be. And they made, like, these little friendly monsters and these evil army guys. And, like, the army guys started mobilizing and all the different facets. They were getting more of the toys, and they were trying to just take over. 
It was I a kids loved, movie, but I would have loved to see a crossover between Toy Story and Small Soldiers. That would have been fucking ace. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Small Soldiers and Chucky. Whoa. You'd have to depend on Buzz Lightyear to save the day for that, right? Nah. He's got military experience, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that little uh, arm laser thing. That'll do the work. There you go. Just poke it in their eye. <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> so, uh... on the topic of artificial intelligence, Travis, what do you think about all that stuff? Uh, anything specific from movies that you've seen that have come uh, into reality that positive or negative any stuff that you really want to see that we haven't seen yet uh the only thing i can think of is i'm still waiting for flying cars i think it's what everybody's waiting for how is that well, artificial in term- intelligence well think about that i mean well i guess you know, that's a good point i was thinking like you have like an onboard computer that would just like you know like how we have cruise control and all that stuff i was thinking that once we have ai fully developed and we have flying cars you know, probably it would be like the brain to con- control you to where you need to go and all that stuff. In case yeah. you decide you're not off, you know. I was actually going to think of a – I was going to mention this later, but since you brought it up now, I was going to say Kit. I would really like to see that. Hmm. And they're actually starting to do that. Uh, now with the new update for iOS on iPhones, you can actually – some newer cars now have a touchscreen panel. You can integrate Siri into your car. What's the name of that – cab service from total recall um oh geez i don't remember i haven't seen a movie in 20 years i want to say it's like the jimmy cab or something something it's like they took like the idea of trying to take you know one thing that everybody wants like spaceships and a lot of that kind of stuff and uh they took like the the ai and just put it in like a shitty car like if you had the fantasy element but it really didn't pan out that well (laughs) (laughs) but i was uh, another thing i'll address too when it comes to ai um whenever you think about i mean science fiction movies they kind of have their own idea of what ai could be like and everything and and it kind it's kind of scary when they when hollywood has its own like uh, way of saying how it's going to be and all that but um like for instance like the matrix we have that, and there's another movie. That's, oh, yeah, of course, The Terminator with Skynet and all that. I don't think it's ever going to get that crazy because uh, mankind has – well, create, we create some really weird things that actually help benefit um, our way of life. But I just don't think it's ever going to get to that point where it's going to get out of control because we're always going to be on top of it. I absolutely disagree. I think that this world is heading more and more towards making people – being just connected into some type of system and you get everything through that you got a tube that gives you your nutrients you're constantly fed entertainment so you just sit there like a drooling zombie and you just sit there lined up in a whole room and that's going to be life soon you you experience all of life through some type of virtual reality i think that's the way the world is heading we're all going to turn into those fat people from wally exactly (laughs) that is exactly what it's going to be like you laugh like all i'm saying is just look at the rats running up while the titanic is going down that's a good point. By the way, it was Johnny Cab from Total ah. Recall. <laughs> oh, there you go. I hope we never see that because that little fucking dummy that would pop up in the cab was creepy as hell. Sean, what do you think about artificial intelligence? As long as I can get Rosie from the Jetsons, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Whoa. Why know. Rosie? Well, why she Rosie when you can have? Like, you know? Why Rosie when you could have Dot Matrix? I I don't know who Dot Matrix is, man. You know, you guys didn't see Spaceballs. I I did not see Spaceballs. Oh God! Blast from me! How dare you? You should watch that. We will be talking about Spaceballs coming up on a future episode of the Four Real Movie Club. Another plug right there. Um, Peyton, artificial intelligence? Are you looking for a Rosie or Dot Matrix or? Are you looking for Hal? I know you're a huge 2001 A Space Odyssey fan. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely tremendous. Uh, I I think robots are things that we can definitely make cool, not just as servants, but even as companions. I don't think that's something we should necessarily shy away from. Uh, I, from my understanding, it's very tough for robots to really become that uh, a 
what's the word I'm looking for? Not aware, not necessarily self-aware, but um, selfish, I guess is the word I'm looking for where they're looking out for themselves. Uh, But I, I, I think that what we could see a scenario at the most is something similar to iRobot, not not like where they're chaos part of iRobot. I'm saying as far as where we have robots, where they're almost like part of the family, you know, it's, it's like, it's like an extra thing we have there. Um, something else I can consider too is like bicentennial man. Yeah. I was just about to say that when you said companion and stuff like that, family member. Yeah. That, that, that's where I could see we could possibly get an AI getting involved. Um, probably not until after years of years of only having to be used for military causes. And of course we have to survive that first. So we'll see what happens with that. You're not looking for like an iron giant. <laughs> well, Fuck that was the iron giant, that was, man. That was, Give us the Jaeger. Was Wasn't that an alien? Yeah, was it was it? an alien. Yeah. The iron giant was an alien. And it was supposed to be a war machine that was supposed to destroy us. Are you sure that you're talking about iron giants, the alien or is Vin Diesel? Or is he just the real robot? What? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Passing that on to you, Sam. Artificial intelligence. Anything we haven't touched upon yet? Um, well, just to refresh my memory, you guys had mentioned iRobot. Wasn't the main problem of iRobot us? Like, weren't we the ones causing the robots problem, and that's why they retaliated? It, it was a failure in programming, just like in RoboCop. Some, some human got greedy, and they programmed them wrong. I thought the problem was a lot of product placement. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. Ten points I mean, for Tony. They yeah. show the shoes like a hundred times in the movie. Anyway, continue. Yeah, I mean, my my biggest problem with artificial intelligence, I really don't think we're gonna see it in our lifetime. The um, I didn't see the movie, but I looked into it. The movie that was in the Oscars, Her, mm. that was a little more advanced than I think we'll get because they actually developed like a self awareness at the end. Spoiler alert. But I don't think like Siri. I don't think we're going to see huge improvements on anything like that for another maybe 30 years. I just I can't see how they're going to make that more advanced. I hope they do because it sucks right now. <laughs> I, I think we'll see competitors. Like I know Google has their own thing. Uh, I think other tablets are trying to make their own version of Siri, but they, they don't compare to Siri. I think my favorite one right now, Siri can do more, but the one that Google has, I don't even know if it has a name. But the Google search is a lot better. Google search has like a Siri thing. All I know is whenever I have the microphone thing set and I say whatever it is, it doesn't come up with the same stuff. Uh, when I talk into the Google mic, sometimes it'll have something speaking back at me. It's a lot clearer than Siri. Hmm. Dace, your thoughts on AI? Uh, the only thing I'm looking forward to is uh, Jarvis. Personal Jarvis? assistant, which is yeah. essentially Siri. Yeah. So just to the point where he can start doing things for me, like, hey, turn on the TV and change it to Channel 4 because the remote's across the room. That's what I need. There's so a I, lot of interesting shit. You could shit. definitely get it set up like that, dude. They, they got all types of things you can integrate with your iPhone and have Siri oh, control. Yeah. That turns your TV on. That turns your lights in your living room purple. Like, it's ridiculous what you could do these days. Oh, yeah. Shit. I, I think Dace that. just wants it to insult him like <laughs> Jarvis would. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I, I want him to not watch my movies either. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's why Rosie would be good for you, see, but <laughs> it all comes back to Rosie, you know? Even Polly from Rocky had a Rosie. Well, Dave, so you had in your uh, list ahead of time the fortune-telling machine from Big. That's kind of artificial intelligence, isn't it? Yes, and if it would work to change, like, the future, like, if I can go back, I know in Big, he get grows up. I'd like to go back and get young again, because I'm old as shit. So we can find that fortune telling machine somewhere on the boardwalk. I'm okay with it. Let's uh, let's get that rolling. Oldest shit translates to 25. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it is. I creak when I walk down the hallway. You hear me cracking. I need I need the fortune telling machine. Yeah. I'm only 24, and sometimes my knee hurts a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 26, and I can't get out of bed sometimes from my back. I need the uh, one of the things that we were talking about before with uh, Batman Begins. How he has that amazing <laughs> leg brace that seemingly just heals it. I need a back brace that happens to do that. Yeah, exactly. We, we're, I'm just old, and I need things to make things easier for me. Yeah, I'll just up, get that exosuit from Aliens. Up next with our interview with Wilfred Brimley. <laughs> <laughs> I I have diabetes. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> beta, beta, beta. We just isolated some of our audience. <laughs> 
Not our fault we like chocolate. <laughs> Ooh. Abandon ship, abandon ship. <laughs> All right, let's go back to another thing that we definitely do have inspired from movies and TV shows and everything. They had this running joke for decades about the future when it comes to phones that we would have video phones and everything from you know uh the simpsons to things like star trek they all had where you would call somebody and you'd be able to see them and i don't know about you guys but the way from my perspective that this happened it sort of just popped up out of nowhere like one day a couple of years ago it was just like oh everybody can do this now and i was just like what the hell like we went from yeah. this transition of like oh that's still like in the future wouldn't that be cool if we did that to like well you've got these little your phones are computers now and they can do like everything oh by the way you can skype and video call people and you know that's just the norm now and we will never go back to not being able to do that like well, can i ask you guys who here actually facetimes with their phones yeah, rarely, but I, I do it from occasion. I, I haven't I done it, I think, out. a single time. I, I have not done it once. Depends on the occasion and the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the person. That was secretive, wow. Sean. I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know about the person, mate. <laughs> Sean's down for any time, anyway. <laughs> he doesn't care who. <laughs> you mean uh, just for the phones, though, right? You don't mean, like, using uh, it over Skype or the computer and stuff, right? He doesn't use his face. No, no. I mean, yeah, video chatting over a computer, or whatever. That's fine. I'm talking about like, say you're uh, just you're you're out somewhere and you need to call someone, and be like, hey, I'm at Burger King. What do you want? Like, are you using the video fucking thing? No, you're just calling them, or maybe you're even just texting them. I don't even think people yeah, are calling people anymore. I hardly call anymore. <laughs> right. I only call when it's like I need an answer right now. I only call when I don't feel like typing. Like it's yeah. obviously a lot easier to just text somebody real fast, but if you need to just go, yeah, like I, you know, my hands are busy right now. I've got like shit that I'm juggling, not like literally, like figuratively. <laughs> but... it, ta- it takes longer, but I just tell Siri to do it. <laughs> it's easier, but it takes a lot longer. Especially when you have one. to sit there like, hey, Nikki, comma, do you want to go out tonight? Question mark. Yeah, see, that's that gets a little weird. I never, you know, I never bother with that kind of stuff. But the video call stuff, it really did just kind of pop up out of nowhere. And I don't think anybody really gives it as much credit as they should. Like, that's pretty awesome. We went from where everybody needed film in cameras and needed, like, disposable cameras to having that included into phones. But then we can also go on the internet on the phones. We can also have live streaming video and the audio syncs up and everything, unless you have like a really shitty phone or something like that, where Skype decides to be terrible, or you have a bad connection, or any of these other outside factors. But that's still pretty amazing if you think about it. Yeah, but there's a problem with all this new technology. They got rid of Snake. Snake? Snake. Remember Snake? Snake! I have no idea what you're talking about. Neither do I. Oh, seriously? This, no, Snake the Game for the Snake old the Verizon game, yeah. phone. Remember when everyone had those old Verizon phones? They all had that game Snake on it. Oh, is like, that the one that where you like... That ro- got bigger and bigger as you ate the dots. Yeah, okay, I remember that now. Oh, they still have like a thousand versions. Yeah, you can, you can get an app of Snake. You just got It doesn't come you know native on the phone. You got to go to the app store and get it. Right. It's not the same, though. I I, I feel you on that. Mm-hmm. I love playing and, Snake. And nowadays we got Flappy Bird. No, <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's coming back. Well, no, now you got like fifty thousand clones of Flappy Bird, <laughs> Flappy Pigeon, and <laughs> that's Flappy terrible. Bird. Flappy Dog, <laughs> and Flat Boys Anonymous. <laughs> yeah. ah. If you want to check out Flat Boys Anonymous, that actually is out that's... there. I don't know if you say it like that. It sounds kind of dirty. Flat Boys Anonymous. <laughs> Fap Boys Anonymous. Fat Boy, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different website that I'm working on. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're still going to do the fanboys calendar, right? <laughs> what do you think it's for? Exactly. It's for fat boys, yeah. You're talking to Mr. January right now. Dibs <laughs> on Mr. September. I've got December. <laughs> Me and the Santathong. Oh, yeah. Mine's going to be a bunch of selfies. 
I don't want to put anybody to shame, so I'm not doing it. But see, now we can do those selfies on our phones, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> Way to transition back to that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he meant to do that. Sure, that's planned. I, I'm actually taking selfies right now, so it works out great. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, before this gets too out of hand, uh, <laughs> let's move too on late. To topic. Uh, when it comes to cell phones and communicators and all that other kind of stuff, uh, Star Trek is one of the things that people bring up a lot as one of the things that really influenced people kind of trying to get that technology out there. I was never big, the biggest Star Trek fan. I mean, I never got into it until these new movies came out. and Those, I think, are great, but TV show I'm still not big in. So when people mention different things that exist on Star Trek, a lot of it uh, just does not compute. I don't know what it is. But one thing that I do know that I wish that they would have are the transporters. I want to uh, teleport place. That's to place. fucking terrifying. It's terrifying, yes. But even if you applied it in a way where you can't do it with humans, think about how much better like FedEx would be. Yeah. If you could just teleport, like, your box of whatever the hell it is. Oh, they're trying those drone things now. <laughs> yeah, Amazon, Amazon drones, whatever. What are they called? The, uh, I don't even know. Amazon, whatever. Amazon Prime Air. Yeah, Prime there you Air, go. That's what it is? Mm-hmm. You mean to tell me that that really, like, is not fake? No, that's legit. I We're living that in the future, too. Tony. It's, no, it's not out yet. They, they have to get clearance with the FAA first, which is honestly possibly unlikely so we'll, we'll see how that goes that's crazy i don't know if i'm gonna like the idea of just seeing like parachutes popping up around my neighborhood every once in a while uh, friends of mine were telling me like you can get a whole lot of free stuff now just shoot them out of the air yeah <laughs> that's a good point just sit there with like a bb gun or whatever just be like oh what am i getting today it's a toaster <laughs> this is america tony we got semi-automatics but transporter-wise, I think that's something that we are going to be looking at in the future. I don't know about the actual science behind it, but it would seem like it would be something that it might not come in the next 10, 20, 50, 100 years or something like that. But it's got to be plausible, right? And I would be totally down for bypassing the post office 100% if I could. What do you guys think about that kind of stuff? Sean? It won't see the light of day in my country, mate. Why not? Because my government is a bunch of cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Well, we know that Sean's going to be abducted out of any of the <laughs> government stuff we've talked about tonight. But, yeah, I could, I could see it happening. Like, you know, I wouldn't mind Amazon shipping my shit straight away and delivering my back gun. Fucking A. Saves me waiting seven days. Well, you'd probably have to pay one hell of a charge to be able to do that. Oh, I'm sure. No, that's, that's a good point. Delivery charge, yeah. No, but, fuck it. I'm, I'm plus you're taking jobs from the postal carrier, man. You know? Well, yeah, but my, jobs. my mom said the same thing. She she worked at a supermarket. She said the same thing about those self-checkouts. But, I mean, they're not going anywhere. So. We could just have more technicians that uh, check up on that other stuff. Tell people go to college, get their uh, <laughs> education for helping the robots out. They were the lazy. slaves of the robots. You tell them, Tony. You tell those lazy asses, just go to college. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> hey, come on. We'll have a technology where it'll be easier to go to college, right? <laughs> well, Peyton, what do you think about the whole transporter uh, kind of thing? Well, you know, it's only been in the last 10, 15 years that quantum physics has really been started to being accepted as a form of science. And we're really putting some serious money and research into it. And I think through that, we're going to unlock lots of crazy ass things that we're going to be talking about, such as teleportation, um, possibly time travel as well. So I, I think this is something that absolutely could be on the horizon. Whether they make it commercially available, I, I honestly couldn't say that that's a tough one. I mean, it sounds like it's something that's going to be very dangerous for humans for product. Maybe they'll, they'll have no problem making that commercially available. Um, of course, and you know, how do you, stop someone from putting their baby brother into it <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man have you what? seen little jimmy yeah he's in rome mom <laughs> no damn it rome really you know the fucking exchange rate there 
<laughs> um, what I think the more likely thing where that technology is heading towards rather than uh, teleportation of sending things to you, and I don't know if this came out of an influence from any movie, but it seems like 3D printing is going to be the thing of the future. Uh, rather than having things delivered to us at all, we're just going to order it and it's going to be created right next to us. That That's where I see the future of that type of technology going. Well, how would that apply to like things with um, chips inside and stuff? Like, and books. Books I could see. They would just need to print it. Well, yeah. you mean chips. You could just print the chip. Could Let's you do be... that with, like, a 3D printer? Yeah, sure. No, not I, now. I can you see can. how you can do that, but... Not now. I mean, I'm saying, like, when you get the technology better enough, you can. All right, because no, I just figured going to make, like, whistles. Like, make, like, a freaking ashtray and it falls apart. Like, it's not there <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what, what happened to Jimmy? Oh, I fell apart. It was a 3D press. <laughs> Poor Jimmy. <laughs> Travis, what are your thoughts on teleportation and all that kind of technology? Oh, my gosh. I've been thinking about this, and really, I'm, I'm on the fence about it. I mean, I can see that it would be nice to have your products delivered to you a little bit faster, but at the same time, I really don't know if the technology would ever would be here, at least not in this generation, but or in this lifetime. But I don't know. I really don't know. Dave? God, I'd love it. I gotta be in Pittsburgh on Wednesday. If I could just wake up out of my bed and just walk through, like a portal and end up in Pittsburgh, it'd be fantastic. It sounds dangerous. That's the thing. Because, I mean, I've heard like um, some theorists, theorists, the, I can't say that Theorist. freaking word. There's, thank you. Tongue doesn't want to work tonight. But anyways. I can uh, fix that. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Nikki, um, I'm going to borrow your man for a moment. But anyways. We're going back to Fat Boys Anonymous. <laughs> what the heck going on? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's kind of just thinking about it. I mean, there's got to be some major concerns about this. I mean, what if, like, for instance, you go through there and all the molecules get all screw up. And all of a sudden you got your arm where your mm-hmm. leg is. Your head is where your junk is. You know, just think about it. You're mixed this up with Jimmy. Halloween special. Yeah. This is Halloween special when Bot goes in with a fly. <laughs> there you go. That worked out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good episode. That <laughs> was a good episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, well, we've talked a little bit about Star Trek and stuff. I want to talk about Star Wars. I don't know about you guys. Uh, my main thing, the first thing that popped up when I thought about this topic and i'm sure a lot of people are thinking about this i want my fucking lightsaber i don't care what color it is i don't care what the hilt is i fucking want one preferably blue give me an obi-wan one or something like that dangerous is all hell just like the trans uh porter teleportation kind of thing because i'm sure everybody's just going to be having you know, limbs cut off left and right. Really, is it? It's no more dangerous than guns. No, it's a hell of a lot more dangerous than guns. We well, got to think the hilt is supposed to be the only thing that you can feel if the whole thing is light. So instead of being like a sword where you can feel that that weight behind it, you're just kind of holding like a, a a flashlight basically. Yeah, but it, it can't work like that. In order for a lightsaber to actually have the properties that it does, it would have to be some sort of ionized plasma. No, wait, is that true? Is is that written somewhere in Star Wars lore that the lightsaber is weightless, or is there something that creates weight in it? Or is it just unknown? As far as I know, I think it's supposed to be weightless. But who told you that? If it was Qui-Gon Jinn, don't listen to him. He's insane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would trust Yoda. I would trust Yoda, at least in yeah. his early, earlier years. His early 500s. You can't trust Obi-Wan, though, because he'll just twist it around and just be like, oh, well, it was kind of true from a certain point of view. You can tell fucking Luke Darth Vader is dad. Definitely don't trust Obi-Wan. <laughs> yeah. He's the man, though. That type of shit led to Luke kissing his sister. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, whoa, I didn't fucking tell you to do that, all right? <laughs> yeah. All I did was give you your father's sword and die. Like, give me a fucking break here. But that's one thing that I definitely want. I've been bugging a friend of mine that works. uh, He's an engineer in the government. And Dace knows who I'm talking about. We've been bugging him for a long time of, dude, when are you going to work on the lightsabers? And he's just kind of like, I'm trying to put all the funds into what I can. But 
government's not too huge on that idea right now. I want one, though. I don't care how long it takes. Who else wants a lightsaber here? I would want really... one, but... I do with the prereqs of the artificial limbs, because I'm going to definitely lose some fingers and shit, and I'd like to yeah. still have ten digits. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty clumsy, so I don't think I'd want one of those. See, you're, you're thinking small, Tony. I want a Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a piece of junk. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest thing in the galaxy, pal. True, but I don't measure things in parsecs. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if you give me some kind of a spaceship from there, I want one of those, uh, what do they call them? The the little triangle-shaped imperial ones. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. The A-wings? I want a <laughs> Death Star. <laughs> there you go, just go full out. I want a You're talking star. about a, a Star Destroyer, right? No, not that one, but that would be kind of cool, too. What or, a little, little shuttle thing. Uh, I want a chicken walker. <laughs> <laughs> you want a little ad at. Or the ad at was a big one, wasn't no, it? No, it was the A-T-S-T? Was that what it is? Yeah, that's right. The chicken walker. As long as it moves, who gives a shit? You can't bring it to, like, Alaska where they do a lot of lodging, because it's, like, it's the biggest fault. Stepping on logs. <laughs> so you want a Millennium Falcon. Uh, yeah. What do you think about, like, other stuff from Star Wars? Other, like, uh, spaceships and all that other kind of stuff? Oh, all the spaceships looks awesome, especially from the original trilogy. I'm not as big a fan of the the architecture and the spaceship design from the, the new one. I'm not going to get into the debating what's better between the old one and the new one. Um, some other cool things, I think, that are awesome from Star Wars would be, like, the uh, that chess thing that they were playing on the Millennium Falcon. So it would be part of the Millennium Falcon if I had it. That, that hologram <laughs> chess they were playing. That that's looks really a, fun. That's wizard's chess. It's, yeah, essentially Wizard's Chess. It's pretty awesome. Uh, what else? Uh, a C-3PO and an R2-D2. R2 and we were talking about having robots. Those seem like really cool robots to have. I mean, I guess R2-D2 would probably get really annoying. Actually, screw him. And actually, yeah. so is C-3PO. <laughs> screw both of them. Yeah, just because C-3PO is more annoying than him. He's fucking whining all the um, time. I, you, know, no, you know what I want? I want that little thing that sat on Yoda. Uh, not Yoda. Um, Jabba the Hutt's tail. <laughs> I don't think that's, that's technology. <laughs> well, layer in a gold bikini. Yeah, yeah, I'll have that too. That th- those uh, yeah, are what I want. I don't care Wars. if it's not technology. I will take that. I want that droid that somehow felt pain when he was getting tortured in Java's palace. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 like you can't fucking feel this. What the hell? You know what I want from Return of the Jedi? I want the boot that Luke wore that he could kick the guy and not even touch him, and the guy would fly back. <laughs> that like the, the force, boots man. from uh, Super Mario Brothers movie? <laughs> oh yeah. That's some technology that we need to do. Speaking of hover stuff. A lot of Star Wars technology I think would be kind of cool. Even like the real basic stuff. Like um, they had in episode two, Attack of the Clones, this little orb that Obi-Wan put on top of like this stand. And it kind of made this like map of the universe. Like a projector almost. Yeah, I thought that thing was even pretty cool. Yeah, I would love to have something like that. The uh, the spaceships aside, I mean that's something awesome. Uh, obviously, a lot of their like their blasters and all that kind of stuff that would be pretty cool. What other stuff from Star Wars are you guys interested in? Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> if they were technology, I Ewok, would say man. abandon the project because fuck, I hate those things. I would be interested in the Camino cloning technology if they could somehow put my consciousness in the body. You need to be bumping your head and stuff. Wait, what? Reference out there if anybody gets that. Um. If you do get that, leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Cloning technology, that would be something that would be pretty good. Although I wouldn't trust that because I'd have fights with my clones and be like, oh, well, who's the real one? Or the clone would commit a crime and then you get in trouble. Yeah. Was Standard it rules. Order 66. <laughs> Stormtroopers alone, what the hell? I'd like Stormtroopers. They're kind of technology if they count as uh, the clones. Yeah, kind of. But not their armor that they wear head to toe, but one shot kills them. Yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> They'd have to learn to aim first as well. <laughs> well, somehow... Christ, could you imagine them beginning. pissing all over your toilet seats? Christ. <laughs> 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 
I think everybody God. actually just sat there and imagined it. <laughs> that was that stall. Everybody's just like, wait a minute, how would I? Uh, how would you put those lists instead? <laughs> like, they gotta somehow make that trash compactor filled with a bunch of shit. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Uh, before we pass off too much on Star Wars, does anybody else have any other stuff to talk about with that? Yeah, the only good thing about at the prequels was Darth Maul's lightsaber. You know, the two mm, lightsabers. That's true. The only thing cooler the than a lightsaber was a double lightsaber. Damn straight. <laughs> and what's better than a double one? We have like five all together. <laughs> or you get like General Grievous where he's got like one in each arm and he's got four arms. There you go. There's technology. General Grievous. I want one of them. Uh, yeah, fuck. Yeah, but... He was he was like the beta to Darth Vader. Yeah, except that uh, I want to still have the warranty on my General Grievous because that one had a virus. <laughs> Wasn't it like the reason he was coughing is because his lungs would fill with fluid because it was they so imperfect? They never explained it because George Lucas lost his fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were like planning on explaining it and then he was just kind of like, meh, fuck it, he looks Yeah, the, oh, I heard that in the commentary or like how they made the movie, but they never explained it in the movie. Mm-mm. No, he just kind of pops up. Out oh, of it's just a place. fucking coughing robot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, we need to, you know, take this to the next level. What do we do? All right, well, we got to have, we got to have some kind of huge fight at the end. Okay, check. All right, we got to have a huge space battle. All right, we'll make that even bigger than before. All right, check. Well, we got to have a coughing robot. All right, we'll check. <laughs> yeah, you know, what do you usually do in uh, at the end of a trilogy? You got to have the coughing robot in there. Have it with Harry Potter. Have it with... <laughs> uh, well, I mentioned... The little thing from episode two, that little hologram thing, which kind of brings up holograms. Uh, we've seen it in Iron Man. We've seen it in Minority Report. A lot of different movies. Anything really in the future tends to be like hologram related. Even uh, what's it called? Um, the Hunger Games movies have these like hologram kind of things going on. And that's something that we have now. I mean, holograms are bigger and bigger. We've in the past, you know, couple of years, we've gotten to the point where. 3D movies weren't a huge thing, and now every movie is 3D, even if it doesn't need to be 3D. <laughs> well, to, to be fair, there was a big 3D craze in, like, the 50s and the 70s. Right, but then it, like, died down, and nobody really put any thought and effort into it. Now it's, like, it's getting significantly more advanced. Yeah, it'll die out again. It'll die out. It already has, isn't it, with the 4K tallies coming up? That's true, 4K. 4K is awesome, by the way, if anybody's seen it. What is that? That's the next advancement past 1080. Ah, okay. Beautiful. Love it. Um, Hologram-wise, though, that's something... We do have some of these things, like in Minority Report and all that. Um, Obviously, that's not commercially available, where you know we've got that on like our tablets and stuff, but we've seen that kind of stuff in beta format put to use so we're going to get to that point sooner than later and i think that's kind of cool what do you guys think about that 3d porn for the win <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna think that's gonna be great until when the guy pops up on it <laughs> slaps a virtual dick in your face <laughs> Like that, there was actually a news report a few years ago. Some woman actually went to a 3D porno and then claimed that she got pregnant and her husband was away on duty or something. And when he came back, he believed her. What? That's just either you're lying to yourself or you are just that. Was sad there a 3D of a human. printer involved? <laughs> <laughs> it all ties back together. 3D printed dildo. <laughs> Anybody looking for hologram stuff in the future? Or is anybody else in that mindset where they'd rather see full on screen and not be able to look through it? The the two well, things that I really liked from Iron Man that I would want would be where he's got like the Mark One hologram and he's like taking away the pieces and throwing them in that virtual trash can. That would be really amazing to have something like that. And the other thing that I really really want is when he has that. It looks almost like a pen. And he clicks it on one screen, and he literally drags what he's doing to another screen and unclicks it, and it's on that computer screen. It's like almost like it just bypasses needing a USB drive. Like I think we're actually pretty close to having it, because anybody seen the Coachella video with Tupac? Mm. No. 
he actually brought him back as a hologram, and he was interacting with uh, rappers on stage. The Great, weird thing is that the technology they use to do that has been around since, like, the 1920s. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just because he's not dead. Well, that too. <laughs> no, I mean, we have holograms. Um, my, what I would like to see, I would like holograms, but why do they have to be see-through? Why can't we come up with a solid hologram? Like full-on Green Lantern light construct kind of things? Sure. That kind of reminds me of that TV show, Red Dwarf, where, um, where Rimmer was killed and they brought him back as a hologram. i kind of like to see something like that happen in the future, too. Yeah, the ones that they had in uh, Thor The Dark World were really interesting. I guess that was supposed to explain Loki's tricks of, like, making copies of himself. Oh, you you know where they had a cool hologram was in um, Escape from L.A. He had that one time use hologram machine that was like nuclear, but he could only use it once. And like they, they spread it out through the whole movie. They kept teasing him when he was going to use it. And I don't want to spoil the ending because it's super cool. But you have to see <laughs> Escape from L.A. Probably the best use of hologram ever. Well, there we, we mentioned go. another thing that we actually didn't get to talk too much about, and this doesn't have anything to do with holograms, but what the hell. It's just something that uh, we skipped over that I want to mention. Time machines. Uh, never going to happen. No, nope, never will. I never pray will. to God it never does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've studied a lot of courses throughout my time <laughs> in college. Uh, a lot of the chemistry, a lot of the physics that I've taken... It's just there's too many physical laws of nature that are violated with backwards time travel. So the only thing realistic you could do with relativity is go forward, but then you'd have no way back. Even going forward, I wouldn't want people doing that. Why is that? Well, I mean, I guess if it was someone you cared about, you would never see them again. But Right. Man, if it's somebody I don't care about, they can go fuck themselves. I don't really care about that, <laughs> but... I wouldn't want anybody to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to go 20 minutes into the future or something like that. And I'd be like, well, why? Like, <laughs> I don't see the point. You could pull a Captain America and you could go like 70 years in the future and your girlfriend remarried and she's like in her 90s and now you're fucking her niece. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the big selling point. <laughs> <laughs> if Sam's working on a time machine, they're going to be like, so what are the... You know, the military uses, what are the social uses? You're like, I don't know, you can fuck your girlfriend's niece in the future. <laughs> 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 Sold a million units. <laughs> I don't like the whole time machine, though. Uh, w- whether it's, you know, from a movie like Terminator or it's from something like The Time Machine, I think that's too scary of an idea. I don't want it I, to happen. I definitely like a time machine that keeps my clothes on, at least. <laughs> Instead of the Terminator ones. <laughs> I'm I'm a little positive about the the possibility of time machines. Uh, I I think once we expand our knowledge into further dimensions of reality, we may be able to figure out a way to travel more with time. Uh, it's definitely not going to be anytime soon. It's it's not even a priority of figuring that out. It seems like um, it's it's one of those things that could, could be abused though. So it's one of those things I absolutely do not think will ever be commercially available. I think it's one of those things that only be available to like CIA type agents. So it, who knows? It might be available now, and we're not just going to know about it. Tell you talking about people abusing it? And you oh yeah, to the government. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> any other thoughts on time machines, guys? Before we move on to another uh, section. Well, What's your favorite uh, version of a time machine, though? I mean, there's the DeLorean, there's uh, a phone booth, both from Doctor Who and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. (laughs) Ugh, man, I don't know. That's... hmm. From a realistic point of view, I never understood how the DeLorean worked. Because the one thing a lot of movies just don't talk about, because just for the sake of the film and telling the story, is just that, I mean, Earth is moving, Our sun is moving. Our solar system is moving. Like, if they go backwards from just that point in the universe, they're just going to end up in space. Because where Earth was today, back in 1955, is not where the Earth is right now. The Earth could be millions of miles away. You're assuming that that part of... uh... Energy, though, is not also moving with the Earth, though. 
you would have to like have calculations to make it do that. You you have to assume that the time portal is moving, or you op- or you know exactly where the Earth was and where you want to be on that Earth at exactly the precise moment to make sure that if you're even like a fraction of a second off, you could be thirty feet above the ground of where you want to be. Flux capacitor, dude. <laughs> it just does everything. Just insert a phlebotanum. That's what it does. I'd rather not have a time machine. I'd rather just be able to do it naturally. That's my answer. You mean aging? <laughs> <laughs> if you're stuck in the only going forward kind of method, too, yeah. But I mean, like, uh, this is totally not a geek movie to bring up, but The Time Traveler's Wife. Uh, this guy just can time travel. Now he can't get like a hold of it, and he goes back and forth all over the place, which I wouldn't want to do. But just being able to do it on your own—that's what I would rather do. I feel like I would have a little bit more uh, control that way. Like Hiro Nakamura. Yeah, there you go. That's a better, <laughs> more geeky example instead of <laughs> uh, some stupid chick flick movie that I almost cried about. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you cried? Almost. Almost. It's actually, my, my biggest fear if that you could time travel is just that, like, sure, you might have control over it, but if anything were to happen, I mean, people get hit on the head and can't do all sorts of things afterward. If you somehow, something happened and you lost control of that ability, you'd basically just be lost in time. Or what if you, theoretically, you just, like, sneezed? Because when you sneeze, you have to close your eyes. You have no control over your body. And if, I don't know if anybody else has come into the the problem but if you're stuck in a car you're driving and you end up sneezing a whole lot and you're like oh my god i'm gonna like crash the car because i can't see enough you imagine trying to do that when you're like time traveling you're just like can you imagine teleporting out of the car while you're on like a highway and like the car just like spins out of control well by that point you already went somewhere else not your concern <laughs> it's like, like i'm uh, over here it's over there it's actually in the newspaper now <laughs> Time travel, that's a huge thing that, uh, that obviously we don't know that we have now or anything like that. Um, that sort of knocks out all the things that I had written down ahead of time. So I'm going to pass this along to you guys. Uh, Travis, first off with you, anything that we didn't touch upon that you thought of that uh, we could kind of backtrack and talk about or anything? Well, um, we were talking a little bit about uh, like some of the cool movies from the 80s where some of the technology came from in those films that we wish we had today. Um, Dave's actually made a pretty good list here in the uh, Skype chat. I would really like to see if um, proton packs from the Ghostbusters would ever be a reality. Wasn't the only use for those, though, for ghosts? Yeah, true. I mean, for, first and foremost, I really don't believe in ghosts. But it's the fact that you have something like that available just for whatever reason... You know, that would be kind of cool. I just want to see someone actually cross the yeah. streams and see what happens. Pointless million dollar inventions. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> hey, because in this country, we throw money around like crazy for stuff we don't need. So let's have some proton packs as well. Not only something that like is theoretically pointless, but extremely dangerous as well. <laughs> they make it a point to be like, these are nuclear devices. <laughs> Imagine and them being not, in the wrong and, hands. And they're not and they're not toys. They're not for children. <laughs> Now the little trap thing that you throw out, that's a toy. Oh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> you can trap Jimmy in that. Poor Jimmy, he's getting he's screwed up all over the place, too. <laughs> no, but that's another thing, too, is, like, a lot of, like, research is being done for needless things in this country. Like, millions and millions of dollars are being wasted for this stuff. When it could be used for, like, things that we need. But, you know, that's just how we are. Well, Dave, you want to run down some of the stuff on your list then? Yeah, sure. Uh, the one that I, out of that list that we put, I put in the Skype chat is the Neuralizer. God, if I had the ability to just flash people uh, with a little device that wipes their memory, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, like, hey, you're coming Dave. over tonight, so flash. <laughs> I think you're forgetting the best part of that movie, the noisy cricket. <laughs> no, nah, I don't need a gun. I just need a device to wipe women's minds. Because <laughs> you want to rape them. It wouldn't be rape if they couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's not the definition. Yeah. Hey, and if anybody Shut catches up. me, 
<laughs> if anybody catches me, I've got a little device that makes them forget. No witnesses. <laughs> so, I'm just saying the neuralizer needs to be a thing. Because nobody would ever be emotionally hurt. <laughs> God damn it, Dace. <laughs> well, this is why Dace isn't allowed to talk. Because there's a whole bunch of other awesome things on that list, but I'm kind of uh, fixated on the neuralizer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a cool thing. I don't know if I'd use it for the same exact reasons, but oh, mine are pure evil. So you probably shouldn't give me technology. <laughs> well, what are some of the other things on your list? Um, the <clears throat> the Batmobile remote control. Granted, I still want to bet there are Batmobiles out there, but if you had a remote control to drive your car to you when you get parked in a parking garage, how awesome would it be just to drive it all the way up to the front because it's raining? Um, the, at just Animanium, if they had the technology to make that element, um, Super Soldier Serum, I'd like to be strong and not actually have to work out. <laughs> the point of view gun, uh, from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I, once again, evil intentions, I would love to sit in a room and just start shooting it at people without trying to get them drunk. Cause that's the only reason like people get their point of view is when they're smashed. I'd rather have a gun that just makes it happen without uh, spending money on alcohol and the little babel fish. I know it's kind of an alien thing, but something to put into your ear. So when people are yelling at you in Mexican, you can understand what they're saying. Well, you also brought up uh, x-ray vision glasses and yes. <laughs> that's something too. That's a real staple when it comes to science fiction and, I don't know if uh, that's necessarily something that um, will, would ever be like a commercially available kind of thing like that because you got to imagine the radiation behind it's probably really dangerous. But that obviously would be awesome. Are you looking at that as the same horrible evil method? intentions? <laughs> evil oh, yeah. intentions as well. Absolutely. It gives a whole new meaning to checking girls out. Sam, anything that we haven't touched upon yet that you've got on your uh, your list of stuff? Uh oh, we lost Sam. That's because Nikki oh. was yelling at him. I guess they're <laughs> into it right now. Oh, sorry, I forgot I muted you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We can talk more about the neuralizer if you want. There you go. I was Sam actually just forgot. That's why the neuralizer got him. Yeah. Um, nothing really that I could think of. Um, I guess maybe since they made it a lot more scientific and realistic, I would fucking love Thor's hammer. For what? What the fuck do you think? (laughs) (laughs) Evil intentions. Exactly. (laughs) I just can't picture Sam walking around with Thor's hammer just like... (laughs) Dude, bashing all day, shit. Shoot, like, after I shoot a few bolts of lightning, no one's gonna fuck with it. So. All day, just running at people. Have at me! And just throwing the fucking thing. It'd be great. I can just picture, like, walking around everyday life, just hitting stuff, like, taking your frustrations out on, like, a mailbox and everything. Like, You can do that with a real hammer, though. Right, like, horribly unnecessary to have Thor's hammer for it. It'd be even better if you, like, for Halloween, just dressed up in, like, a red blanket, put on a cheap wig, and just fucking carried a regular hammer and started beating people with it. (laughs) There's probably real people that do that. (laughs) Probably. Sean, anything that we didn't talk about that you've got on a list? Yeah, just the technology that was in Jurassic Park. We want to see the cloning of the dinosaurs, you know? Damn, that's a good one. Oh, cloning, that's a good one. It's going to go to shit, though. I mean, No, it can't. Uh, DNA has a half-life, so we can't clone anything that's a couple million years old or older. Oh, uh, that's that's a good point, yeah. Debbie Downer. Yeah. I but trust we, Wayne we, Knight more. We can clone things from the Ice Age, so if you want a saber-tooth tiger, go for it. Fucking On age. it. <laughs> Not even like the saber-tooth tiger. Trainee? Or, Screw that. Dace and I will open Paleolithic Park. I'm in for it. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're already in the process of cloning a woolly mammoth. Yeah, Yeah, I heard about that too. Yeah. I think they're just taking an elephant and just like putting a coat (laughs) on it. (laughs) Just a team of like Nordic guys keep shaving their beards and gluing the hair on (laughs) them. Or they just bring out a regular African elephant and they just say they shaved it. Right. (laughs) It's the special rare shaved woolly mammoth. (laughs) (laughs) It's not just hairless, it's the shaved. (laughs) 
They're like, so how come it never grows it back? Uh, well, that's we what happens. We keep shaving it. Magical creature. <laughs> <laughs> like unicorns. They're like, hey, who are the scientists here? Shut up. <laughs> well, also, the web blast is from Spider-Man. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the webbing. They do have different things that are kind of like that now. Spider silk and everything like that. Yeah, really they high they tensile strength. They just make a mess strength. at parties. Hmm? They just make a mess at parties. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want that cellophane S that Superman rips off his chest in Superman 2. <laughs> <laughs> and just temporarily throw it at people and trap them for a few seconds. This would be horrible if we got all this technology, because I could just picture Dace going around flashing people's minds with that uh, neuralizer and everybody with the, the lightsabers, and Sam's walking around, he's got Thor's hammer, and... Uh, I <laughs> would the dominate the world. Blasters ...with battering than the fucking stormtroopers. <laughs> he's just, like, throwing <laughs> the cellophane ass at people. <laughs> this would be so horrible of an idea for us to have this stuff. I'd absolutely dominate the world, and you'd all be fucked, literally. <laughs> but we wouldn't remember it. Not a not unless your ass hurt the next morning. But that's about it. <laughs> God damn like, it, Dace. What is this pain? I don't know. You just got neuralized, bitch. So just remember, everybody, that if they become a reality, male or female, you are not safe from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I get Dace, bored. You remind this me of going... a dude from the Hollow Man. Oh God, that'd uh, be even great too. <laughs> couldn't see me i still do things travis anything that we didn't talk about um i really got nothing else to add to the conversation <laughs> Payton? i mean you know. travis you wanted to, to get whatever you had to say there? <laughs> no 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 i'll no, just, just I, that was my point is i got Tony nothing else to add to it i think we've i think we've covered everything we could <laughs> so you think let me oh. tell you a story about the very first item that I remember seeing in a movie and wanting so badly. And it not only became real, but I was fortunate enough to get it one of the Christmas fo Christmases following seeing that movie. Why did Christmas start shut down? I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> they heard you, Nikki. <laughs> that item that I am talking about is the Talk Boy from Home uh, Alone yes. 2. I loved that stupid little thing. It just records your voice. It'll play it backwards. It'll play it in slow-mo. Make you sound like you're an adult by having a deep voice. <laughs> it was a cool little gadget. I loved having that thing as a toy. And I would impersonate Kevin McAllister all over the place. I would try to call places on the phone acting like I'm an adult and didn't have as good a results. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you, could show, you could show him a picture of Macaulay Culkin now so that he knows not to grow up like that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Time Machine wasn't real. <laughs> It would be just for that purpose. I am going to call out a, another Ghostbusters invention, the Ecto-1. If uh, I could have any vehicle, I think that might be it. That thing is just so cool looking. Uh, uh, honorable mention, if I'm going to be talking about vehicles, also to the car from the Munsters. Yeah, I'm going to pull out an old school television show here, the Munsters. You ever see their cars, this like modified hearse to have this extra seat sitting off the back? Also has this hot rod front, really awesome looking vehicle. I would drive the car from Beverly Hillbillies where Granny oh, was yeah. sitting on the rocking chair up on top of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or I, I would drive the car from National Lampoon Summer Vacation where Granny is also sitting on top of the car. Way to dream big. It's like we could have like the Tumblr. We could have, you know, all these like flying cars and all this other kind of stuff. And it's like, I want the one where my grandmother can sit on top. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. Uh, props to Sean. I also had dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. It's awesome if we could find a way to bring those guys back. Till I crushed everyone's dreams. Yeah. The golf bag from Caddyshack that <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield's what? character had. The, the golf bag. You ever see Caddyshack? He had that super awesome golf bag. It had like a stereo and it had like a that beer in it. And it would shoot the golf clubs out to him whenever he wanted them. That golf bag kicked ass. They could probably do that. Yeah. Oh, don't, totally could. Yeah, I honestly thought you we were going to be on about the bloody gun from um, Beverly Hills Cop. That was pretty ace nice, with the television and radio. Oh, that was a good one, too. Uh, Willy Wonka's factory. Just the whole damn factory. That would be cool to, to have that. What about his flying glass elevator? <laughs> yeah, the, the whole thing. I'm saying every single part oh, of it. Okay. All, all I was going to say the glass elevator the, was a piece Wonka of shit. The Wonka vision, the, the freaking egg things, all of it. Uh, you the, just the won the Oompa Loompas. The Oompa Loompas. 
I mean, those already exist. I mean, Snooky. <laughs> <laughs> Are they technology? <laughs> they he, could like, be. Did he, like, grow them or something? <laughs> Are they, are they technology? What a question. <laughs> That's a question for the, the comments. Are, are Oompa Loompas technology? <laughs> um, the breakfast machine from Pee Wee Herman. I, I love that thing. He just wakes up in the morning and there's this whole contraption piece by piece that you know sets off each other at creating his breakfast. Uh, it reminds me of – I don't know if you guys remember these toys that were kind of big when we were younger. Oh, what the hell were they called? Were they called Connects? Where, like, you would yeah, just basically create a machine of, like, you know, one thing would happen. Kind of like the game Mousetrap. Like, one thing would happen, which would influence another thing to happen, would influence another thing to happen. Uh, Sam, what's the, what's the scientific term for that? For what? Like, a, a chain of events. Butterfly like effect? Thing another thing. Oh, shit. It's um, a Rube Goldberg machine. A Rube Goldberg machine, that's yeah. That. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that. So that Pee Wee Herman's breakfast machine, I think that would be an awesome thing to have in my kitchen set to an alarm clock to go off every morning to have me a delicious French toast breakfast. Uh, One of the things that came real from a movie that I was recently watching and it uh, just kind of blew my mind watching it retrospect how much it hit the nail on the head was the Truman Show predicting reality television. That's a damn good one. Yeah. How how massively obsessed the, the, the nation would become with it. Um, if you haven't watched that movie in a while, I highly suggest watching it with 2014 eyes because it, it really hits, hits a nerve while you're watching it. It's a fantastic film. Jim Carrey at one of his absolute best roles. Um, and to mention another Jim Carrey role, actually I didn't have it on this list, but now that I'm thinking about it, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, who wouldn't like to be able to erase a few memories? Eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this know. guy. This when Dace gets, when Dace gets done with you, you definitely want to erase it. What would, be the, what would be the side effects of something like that, though? Think about that. If you I wanted a memory erase, what if like that would cause something else where uh, you erase this memory, but somehow this kind of stayed put, but then all of a sudden you erase that, then it kind of affects and it goes on and on and on like falling dominoes. Think about it. I just don't uh, think uh, You guys are worrying too much about this shit. <laughs> in the movie, it all went flawlessly, except that. Well, that's a movie. I'm falling in love again but, anyway. Dace is going to build the Statue of Liberty one. All right. And for my grand finale, my favorite movie invention that I am happy to say that I myself brought to reality, the cross joint from Pineapple Express. (laughs) (laughs) The apex of the vortex of smoking technology. I think that pretty much rounds us out for everything that we can think of. Right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got one more. Oh, you got another one? Go ahead. This is actually legitimate, too. Uh, didn't uh, in Star Trek, Spock used to carry around this machine that would just scan you and it would tell you exactly what's wrong with you? Yes. You're yes, asking the wrong person. <laughs> I would definitely love for that to be a thing because, like, if I'm ever coughing, I'm like, shit, do I, do I just have a cold? Do I have the flu or do I have cancer? I can just scan it and it'll say, okay, you have stage three lung cancer. You well, we already have WebMD. WebMD sucks. <laughs> Every time I go on that thing, it's always cancer. Like, you know what? Uh, I'm sneezing, I'm coughing, and I have a fever. Oh, well, you must have brain cancer or something. Maybe you should take the hint. Maybe you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe WebMD is just like, dude, I'm fucking telling you cancer. Can you get checked out? <laughs> Why do I get flack for saying we should have transporters get rid of uh, jobs with FedEx, but we, we get rid of doctors, and it's like, that's okay. <laughs> I just thought of one more. Um, anybody remember that TV show Sliders? No. Yeah, I do. Okay, okay. so Sam, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is re- um, this this guy, uh, played by Jerry O'Connell, he creates this remote control device that shoots out this portal, and you jump right through it. You go to different uh, dimensions. Like think of like a, like there's, like a uh, a roulette wheel, as you will. There's like infinite possibilities of worlds that a person can actually slide to by jumping into this portal, and it'd be it'd be like current times. But things be different, like you have uh, different laws, different people in charge, you know, something's different about your city, you know, things that don't exist in your reality but are possible in other realities. Like Zordon. Zordon? <laughs> Zordon's technology, man. I was thinking more like uh, the if you guys have ever seen the show on Adult Swim, Rick and Morty, the... Uh, Rick, the scientist, has this little gun that will shoot out a portal, and he can go to whatever dimension he punches into it. I was thinking more along the lines of Quantum Leap. 
No, I wouldn't want that. No, because no, you can't so. control that shit. It's a good theme song, though. <laughs> so, anybody uh, have any other ones before we finish this off? Yeah, Zordon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a good one to, to leave off on. Let's talk about Zordon for a minute. You want to have a giant floating head that can uh, tell you that stuff, or would you rather move? have... I don't think he have, counts uh, his technology. I'd rather have his tube that keeps him alive. Well, yeah, I'd rather, Al- much rather go for Zordon than Alpha. A little annoying well, shit. Alpha 5, yeah. he's awesome. Well, I, 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 I want whatever is keeping Lord Zed alive without his skin. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Alpha 6 have like a real like gangster voice? Aye, 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 aye. I don't I'm, think that was very gangster. It'd be like, yo, yo, Power Rangers. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awful. Yep. Thank God I stopped watching that show. <laughs> Even as a kid, it was just like, all right, I'm out. Apparently in one of the future seasons, they had like Alpha 7, which had his original voice again. That's like going back to what they're going to do with Windows 9, going back to Windows 7. <laughs> <laughs> so like that whole Windows 8 thing. Yeah. Screw that. Piece of shit. <laughs> oh, all right. I think that'll round us out for this episode. What we're going to do right now is just do some quick plugs, and then that'll be it. So first up, Dace. Hey! Yes, follow me on Twitter, at the Dace Man. Check me out Wednesday nights on Mega Powers Radio, the Dace Man Show. April 13th, we're kicking off a new podcast that'll happen every month, and it is for Real Movie Club. We're going to be doing Mel Brooks films for the first one. And check me out at oldtimewrestling.net. Sam? Uh, you guys can check me out at science101blog.tumblr.com. Uh, you can also check out Science 101 on Facebook. And after May, when I finally graduate college, I will actually have everything up and running and actually have a YouTube series for it. Travis? Yes, you can find me on YouTube, youtube.com slash rosecardreviews and youtube.com slash rosecardletsplay. Uh, fanboysanonymous.com, really awesome website, of course. I uh, had a couple of articles go up here recently, one about the Castlevania art book, which is phenomenal. And I did a thing about how collecting video games is a little expensive. But check those articles out, and also you can find me on the Dace Men Show Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on Mega Powers Radio. You can find me on Twitter, TravisGoss79. And, yeah, that's all I've got going on right now. Sean? I ain't got nothing apart from my Twitter, SeanC2K37, where you can find out what do you do when your dishwasher stops working. You can just <laughs> slap her on the ass and tell her to get back to work. <laughs> this is why none of the girls come on the podcast i think that was because of days with this uh <laughs> hey i'm just being honest with them like we aren't all gonna go and do that it probably it probably happened to me like 20 times you weren't supposed to know that days <laughs> <laughs> and lastly payton all right. Well, you heard the name mentioned a number of times. I am the station director at Mega Powers Radio, and I would enjoy all y'all listening to support all the fine programming we have going on there. We got stuff going on almost every single night of the week, covering everything from sports to wrestling to whatever the heck your fancy is. We got lots of new shows coming up, such as what Chris said with the Four Real Movie Club, and also I'll be debuting a show called Nerd Court, where all the biggest debates in nerddom will finally be settled. The first episode we're going to be doing is. Nicholas Cage. Is he awesome or is he awful? It's going to be an excellent debate. Lots of people always have very passionate opinions on which side they fall on, so stay tuned to MegapowersRadio.com and, of course, FanboysAnonymous.com for all the shows that are included in that lineup. And also, to pay attention to what's going on with me anyplace else, follow me on your social network of choice by looking for M-R-P-A-D-E-N. That's Mr. Payton. Follow me like me whatever the heck it is appropriate for that place thank y'all and thank you tony big thanks to everyone on the panel for being on this episode and thank you guys for listening for my plugs i want to mention fanboysanonymous.com itself if you want to join the team as a writer or a contributor in some fashion we have a lot of different responsibilities and different positions that are open so just send an email that way and we'll get to talking to you 
we've mentioned for real movie club and nerd court we also have another thing that we're working on which isn't necessarily going to debut you know really uh soon but it's in the works which is fan tracks we're going to do commentary tracks for our favorite movies and tv shows and everything like that so if you're interested in that kind of stuff stay tuned for that that'll be on the youtube channel that we have here Obviously, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like and follow, and all that other kind of stuff. Share that with your friends and family, and all the other accounts that are on the social media stuff, all that Blitzkrieg kind of nonsense. Uh, We have an upcoming special podcast, March 30th, for How I Met Your Mother fans. The series finale is going to be the night after that, so to commemorate that and to honor that series, we're going to have a big gathering For anybody who's a fan of that, you'll be able to call in live to that show and express your thoughts on not only the upcoming uh, finale, but also just a retrospective on the past bunch of seasons and what that meant to you, what your favorite episodes were, so on and so forth. Uh, Stay tuned for everything like that. Uh, You you can never list everything that's going on, so you'll just have to pay a whole lot of attention to that. And for this group meeting, this is adjourned. We will see you next time, everybody.